Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson. Welcome to the Bible study. Uh, this is Tuesday, and it is, uh, let me get this date here. It's Tuesday, and we are here for our Bible study here at Jesus is the Answer Church at Agilon Temple. Amen. And we're getting ready. We want you to call your neighbor, call your friends. Amen. And so we just uh, want to thank God for you. Amen. While we're waiting, I'm going to talk about this again at the end of the broadcast, but we have some love gifts for all of our partners this month. Amen. We have some love gifts. We want to thank God for Sister Shay. Amen. One day she's going to be in the ministry doing a great work for God. But we thank God for Sister Shay, and we have these Bible chains. My head is too big for this to fit over my head. You know, I would have to undo the chain and put it around me. But it kind of looks like this, and it has, uh, I, I think, the book of, um, uh, let me say, I think it has the book of the, the Ten Commandments. Oh, what's inside? The Our Father. The, oh, the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer. They call it the Lord's Prayer, but it's inside of this Bible, and man, it is made of a, a type of copper. And we want you to have this for your love gifts, large or small. We're trying to knock out the debt for our television ministry. Amen. So we need another 2500 to knock that off. But uh, these are some of the love gifts, one of the love gifts that we're offering. Amen. If you could sow a seed of $25 or more, amen, we want to send this out to you. And also, for those who will give a love gift of $100 or more, we have this gold coin medallion, amen, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's called the shield of faith, amen, and it is the shield of faith for your love gift of $100 or more to help us continue to take apostolic television around the world, amen, once you join us, be our partners, amen, you can be a partner for $25 a month, or you can do a one-time gift of $100 a month, amen, or, or $100, amen, for this one-time gift. And get this wonderful gift. We thank God for Sister Shay. Amen. Sister Shay, she uh, provided these love gifts for this month. So for everyone that will sow a $100 seed toward our television, help us knock this $2,500 debt off. We will send this to you for only $100. Amen. And it's a gift. It's a love gift. We're not charging for gifts. These are just love gifts. And this is your love gift of $25 or more. You can send it to the Cash App, and we'll talk about it later in Bible study. Well, right now, we want to talk about the power of unity. We want to talk about the anointing that flows with unity, okay? We want to talk about the anointing that flows with unity. That's what we want to talk about. Unity brings a flow of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. So we're going to go to Psalms 133. Amen. If you have a Bible... You have a Bible, there's one right behind you in the seats. Amen. For those that are here in the house. Amen. So Psalms 133, it is a song of David. Amen. So I want to remind you for your love gift this month to help us pay down our television bill. Amen. We want to send this a gold a shield of faith medallion. It is a collector's item. We want you to get this for a love gift of $100 or more. Amen. If you'll give that tonight, amen. And you can go to our cash app, which is money sign J-I-T-A-9-9. That's J-I-T-A-9-9. We thank God for Sister Shay providing these love gifts. Amen. So this one you can get for $100 or more. If you do it tonight, it's only available tonight. It's not available next week. It's only available on Bible study nights. Amen. And then we give these away, amen, to special guests who come visit us in the service. Okay. And then don't forget, we got this beautiful chain that has the Lord's Prayer. And I really say it's the disciples' prayer because the Lord's Prayer was when Jesus prayed. Amen. He prayed and see it opens up. It's a Bible that opens up for your love gift of $25 or more to help us to continue to take apostolic television around the world. Amen. So tonight we're going to Psalms 133. Amen. And again, thank you so much, Sister Shay, for the love gifts this month. Amen. God bless your heart. 
All right, so um, uh, we want you to get your Bibles out. Amen. Get your Bibles out. And uh, let's begin to study tonight. And what we're studying tonight is the power of unity. Okay? The power of unity. Psalms 133. It says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Okay? It is like the precious ointment. So let's, let's first of all, let's deal with this first thing. The Bible says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Okay, so when he talks about brethren, anytime the Bible talks about brethren, it's talking about sistering too. I call them, you say brethren, I say brethren, I say sistering, right? And the Bible says it's good for us to dwell together in unity. Satan's number one tool against the family is division. His number one tool against the church is division. His number one tool against people who are working together is division. Because the Bible says a house divided against itself will not stand. Okay, let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. For your mercy, your grace, your kindness. We thank you, God, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall tonight, God. And let no flesh glory in your sight. And we ask you, God, just to minister to those that are watching here tonight, God. And we thank you. We praise you right now, God, in Jesus' name. Bless this word tonight, God. Bless the word. Let it be a blessing to somebody tonight, God. God, we thank you for that right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So when we start this text off in 133, the first thing it says, Behold, look, check this out, how good and how pleasant, how good and pleasant. There's two words here, good and pleasant. What does pleasant mean? Pleasant means when we dwell together in unity, we're not involved in a hostile environment. You know what I'm saying? You can live in a house and it not be a home. You could work on a job and it not be a good place to be because it's a hostile environment. So God wants to create a good environment and he wants to create an environment of peace. So the first two things that this psalm starts off with is 133 is how good. In other words, it's a good thing and how pleasant. Goodness and pleasance comes from brethren dwell together in unity. You know, I grew up in the city of Compton, California, and everybody talks about, uh, you know, uh, about the gangs, amen. And, you know, back in the day, the gangs were started to protect certain neighborhoods, and they were not into killing, they weren't into shooting, they were just there to band together to protect their particular blocks from other folk that tried to came and infiltrate their blocks. Amen. They were together. They had basketball games, football games. That's what the, the, the groups were united for. But I come to tell you tonight, amen, but the enemy puts his hand on anything good to divide it. So now, you know, it doesn't matter if you're from a crip, you're from blood, you're from uh, cholos, whatever it is, now they're so divided that they're fighting each other. They're warring against each other. This neighborhood against that neighborhood, and they're all warring against each other. When you've got to understand, we're all in the same gang, number one. And number two, we're all in the same battle. We're trying to defeat Satan. We're trying to defeat sin. We're trying to defeat poverty. We're trying to defeat death. We're trying to defeat hell. We're trying to defeat the grave. But we cannot do any of these things by fighting each other, by being divided. So the Bible says how good and how pleasant. It's pleasant when you can have a family get together and everybody's not fighting each other over what set you're from or who got more money or, or all this confusion. Confusion, confusion is of the devil. The Bible says God is not the author of confusion, 
as in all the churches of God, but of peace. you got to understand God works in unity. He does not work in division. He does not work, amen, in a house divided against itself. Division is not the will of God. Okay, so somebody was telling me, well, if division is not the will of God, how come there were 12 tribes of Israel? How come there were 12 sections of tribes? They were not 12 tribes of Israel. They are not 12 tribes of Israel. It's just that there were 12 sons. So if you have 12 sons, what's your last name? Huh? Bailey. Just May? What's your last name? Bailey. Bailey. Okay. So we have a Bailey here, then we have a Bailey here, right? So the Bailey family should be one. The Johnson family should be one. What's your last name? Warren. The Warren family should be one. The Woodson family should all be one, right? They should be one within themselves. And then in the 12 units of those sons that came out of, out of, uh, uh, out of uh, Joseph, out of those 12 sons, it was Abraham, Isaac, and J Jacob. So out of Jacob, he had 12 sons. Just because they had different divisions of those sons did not mean that they were called to be divided. Okay? So those divisions were only identifications. Somebody say identification. Amen. So when we talk about denominations, we talk about church denomination. Somebody says, I'm a Baptist. Well, what does that do? What does that define? First of all, being a Baptist defines what you believe. That's all. It does not mean that you're not a Christian. It does not mean that you're not saved. It just identifies what I believe. Okay? So if we say I'm apostolic, we automatically know that if you tell me if I travel around the country and I want to go to an apostolic church, I know I'm going to a church where they baptize in Jesus' name. I know I'm going to a church where they're filled with the Holy Ghost. So if I, as an evangelist, travel to another state and I want to take somebody to a church where I know they're going to be baptized in Jesus' name and I know they're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost, where do you think I want to take them first? To an apostolic church. And also, you've got to understand, just because people baptize in Jesus' name, just because people have the Holy Ghost, what do they do after that? Okay? So you got people that have the foundation, which is Jesus Christ. That's already laid. But what after that, if somebody says, well, I don't believe in women preachers. Or somebody says, I don't believe uh, in the church. I don't believe in communion. I don't believe that, you know, that men shouldn't preach with their heads covered. I don't believe that a woman should have her hair. I mean, it's, all of that comes, you know, with everybody's different flavor. Amen. Everybody in this church, how many of y'all in this church like chocolate ice cream? How many is chocolate ice cream your favorite? That's your favorite. Okay, but that's not y'all favorite, right? What is your favorite ice cream? Butter pecan. Butter pecan. Mine too. And what's butter yours? Pecan. Okay, so y'all butter pecan. I also like mint and chip, okay? But because I like, we like different ice creams, does that make us different? Because you like this kind of ice cream, I like that kind of ice cream. But the bottom line is the basis of salvation is that we do what the Bible says in order to be saved. That's the basis of salvation. Can I get a witness in the house? So the basis of salvation is in the book of Acts. Amen. The basis of salvation is in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 38. And, then, and that is when, when the people in the first time in the Bible said, what do we need to do to be saved? They heard the gospel. They heard about Jesus. They heard how they crucified Christ. So the people said, oh my God, what are we going to do? Okay? In order for a person to be saved, they have to understand that they're in a dilemma. Okay? If you like your life, you like your sinful life, you like gangbanging, you like ho-hopping, you like fornicating, you like getting high, you like all of that, you could be in a dilemma, but to you, you've made it a lifestyle. Amen? You can look at your life and say, I like my life. I like getting high. I like having sex with a bunch of women. Some of you are men who like having sex with men. Some of you are women who like having sex with women. You don't care if the Bible, what the Bible says about any of that. You're going to do whatever you like. Okay? There was a rap group one time. 
Uh, I think Tupac was with that group. I don't remember that, you know, but they used to sing a song, Do What You Like. So a lot of y'all do what you like and you accept the consequences of it. So if somebody gets AIDS from a gay relationship or, or a heterosexual relationship, if a woman gets a baby, how do we look at that? Oh, it's devastating. I'm not ready for this child. But at the same time, you understand that those are you understand that those are the consequences of your sin, okay? And some people don't mind the consequences. They don't care about the consequences. You know what I'm saying? They learn to adjust their lives to the consequences, okay? So therefore, they feel like, I don't need Jesus. I don't need to be saved. I don't need to walk up right before God because I like getting chased by the police. I like getting shot at. I like, amen, getting a venereal disease and got to go to the doctor and he got to shoot me up. People like that. I like sex, so I understand if I get a venereal disease, I know how to go to the doctor and he give me a little shot and I get rid of it until you get AIDS, until you get herpes. And then even when you get herpes and you get AIDS, you understand what I'm saying? No, which one is incurable? It's herpes, right? Herpes is incurable and AIDS is incurable. So even when you get that disease, some people are like, so what? I got the disease. I'm going to go share the love. I'm going to go spread the love. It's a shame they had to vote to make uh, spreading of a sexual disease a crime. Because some people are like, well, hey, since I got this disease, I'm going to share it with the rest of the world. <laughs> okay? And, I, you know, whoever get it, if they die, they die. You know, that's just how it's going to be. Okay? That's horrible. That's a horrible way to think. But people think like this, if I suffer, I don't care if you suffer, okay? Some people get involved in crime, and when they about to go down, they start dropping the names of the people that was around them. They start becoming a snitch. And you remember the old saying, snitches make ditches? <laughs> Amen? So they don't care. They don't care because if they're suffering, they want everybody else to suffer. Are y'all with me? So they have learned to adjust their lives to suffer. They have learned to suffer, amen. And so what we're talking about here today is God called us to be unified, okay? He called us to be unified. So watch this. So the Bible says, behold, check this out, how good and how pleasant, pleasant. People like a pleasant atmosphere. Why do you think people move out the hood? Because they tired of the helicopters, the gunshots, the ambulances. They tired of the hospitals being, you know, the trauma centers like at Martin Luther King around the corner. They're tired of seeing people shot up, stabbed up, killed up. So they feel like if I move out to the desert, I'll be in the house by myself until they find out that there was somebody that just got robbed in the desert. Somebody got robbed across the street. Now in Beverly Hills, you know, everybody, I'm going to move to Beverly Hills and I'm going to be behind my tall gates. But now people are walking their babies and people are jumping out of cars, robbing them at gunpoint, stealing from them, doing all these different things. Can I get a witness in the house? Amen. And so it's not pleasant anymore. Amen. Living in Beverly Hills is not pleasant. Living in the desert ain't pleasant. Living in the mountains ain't pleasant. Can I get a witness in the house? So you have to be able to make your situation pleasant right where you are. Amen. You got to go in your house, anoint your house with the blessed oil, amen, that we can send to you. You know, go and bless, bless your house, anoint that house. If your children are running amok and the devil's dragging them around like a lion, then you can go anoint their shoes, anoint their bed, anoint their bedrooms, amen, and dedicate your house back to God. Let God have control again of your house in the name of Jesus. And make it a pleasant environment instead of an environment of violence. You know what the scripture says? You know, sometimes people put up with violence because the violent person is bringing money in. So they put up with it. Amen. The person who's living a nickels with the dog meat, amen, is creating a hostile environment. And instead of bringing peace to the environment, can I get a witness in the house? Instead of bringing peace to the environment, they'd rather deal with the hell just so they can have the money. Huh? Ain't that crazy? Amen. Some people will go rob folks 
and, and say, I know I got to go to jail for two years, but hey, at least I got some money. Okay? So to me, that's not good and that's not pleasant. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? Some people are on drugs. Amen? And you try to tell them, you know, you need to get off drugs. God, you need to get off drugs. That's bad. But some people like being on drugs. They like, they like getting high. Amen. I remember I was witnessing to a young brother one time, and he said, oh, heck, I just want to get high. <laughs> I'm like, really? You enjoy getting high? Amen. So some people, that's the life they want. There's hundreds of thousands of people homeless right now. And I've had the opportunity to minister to some and ask them questions. Do you want to come out of homelessness? And some say, no, I don't want to pay no bills. I don't want to have, I don't want, I don't want to deal with no kids. I don't want to deal with no, I like living on the street. I don't have no responsibility. Amen. I can go to the local church and I can eat and I can do all that. That is not good and that is not pleasant. Some people are like, I want to live in a tent. So somebody come by late at night, rob you, beat you up, take what's ever in your tent. You ain't got much, but they'll take what you got. That's not good, and that's not a pleasant environment. Jesus came to bring us a good and pleasant environment. Okay, You can live in a mansion and be living in purity hell. Look at the rapper who threw a party Amen. He threw a party somewhere in West L.A. in the Beverly Hills area. And somehow or another, they got his address off of the uh, video. Amen. And they came up there. He was in the bed. They was partying. He was in the bed taking a nap. When he woke up, he woke up to bullets going in his head. That's not a good environment. That's not a pleasant environment. That's not a unified environment. Jesus came, amen, to bring us on one mind and one accord. And I'm going to show you how he did that. Okay? So look what it says here. He says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for, what? Brethren and sistering to dwell together in unity. Dwell together means live together. Okay? Dwell together means live together. When you have a husband and wife that's on one mind and one accord, they will be together. When you have children that live in the same house that's on one accord, they will be together. Okay? Now look at verse number 2. It's like the precious ointment upon the head. What does the ointment upon the head represent? When you get a bottle of anointed oil, where do they usually anoint you? On the head. They anoint the head. Amen. Why do you anoint the head? Because the head is actually the head of the entire body. You cut this head off, the arms can't move, the legs can't walk, the body can't breathe. Nothing happens without the head. It is the head that gives you the eyesight, it is the head that gives you the ability to hear. It is the head that gives you the ability to think. And it's the head that gives you the ability to do two things through the mouth. Nurture the mouth and communicate. So if you don't have a head, your body follows the instruction of the head. So if there's no head, the body gets no instruction. Amen? And that's why the Lord's been dealing with me. He said, listen, if, he said, if you're going to be the head of the church, then you have to nurture the rest of the body. Okay? What does that mean? You got to tell the arms what they need. You got to nurture the rest of the body. You got to take care of the chest. You got to take care of the heart. You got to take care of the mind. You got to take care of the body. You know, like, has anybody ever uh, been hurt before? Anybody ever got hurt? You hit your arm. You hit something down here. What's the first thing your hands do? Your hands are the first thing to go there. Why? Because there's healing in your hands. Whether you believe it or not, everybody has healing in their hands. And that's why as soon as your head's hurting, first thing you do, lay hands on you, you grab your head. You're not praying over your head, but you're grabbing your head looking for relief. Can I understand? If your chest is hurting, what are you always doing? Putting your hand on your chest. And what are you doing while you're putting your hand on the chest? If you're saved, you're praying. You're praying that God, whatever's going on on the inside of this chest that I can't see, I'm praying that you intercede. Somebody say intercede, intercede and heal whatever's going on, okay? If you hurt your leg, what's the first thing you start doing? You start rubbing your leg. Why? Why do people rub their leg? Amen. If you get shot, what do you start doing? You start touching the place where you get shot. Why? Because your hands are made to heal, okay? Okay, so watch this. He said it is like the precious ointment. The precious ointment. What is the precious ointment? 
Does anybody can tell me what the precious ointment is? It is like the precious ointment upon the head. Okay? I want you to find a scripture for me, Brother Woody. Go to the, uh, I need the 23rd Psalm. Go to the 23rd Psalm. I want you, I want to show you what the precious oil is like the precious the ointment. The ointment. Yeah, it's the living water, but the ointment. There's a difference between ointment and oil. He said it's like a precious ointment. If anybody here knows what ointment is, okay, if you know what ointment is, you're going to find out what it does. Yes. Okay, I got it. What is it? Okay, let me, let me go to, what is it, 23rd Psalm? Yeah. Hold your hands there. Let's go to the 23rd Psalm. I want to show you guys something right now. That's right, Sister Blanca. That's right, but let me show them in Scripture what we're talking about. Go to Psalms. 23. When you have it, say amen. Okay? When you have it, say. Now, everybody knows the 23rd Psalm. If you don't know nothing else in the Bible, everybody kind of knows the 23rd Psalm. But look what it's saying here. Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready? Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now this is what I want you to pay attention to. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Enemies. Enemies. Plural. Amen. So if you call yourself saved, you're going to have enemies. Okay? And there's two types of enemies. There's the enemies with the E. That's exterior. Then you have enemy. You have enemies on the inside of you. It's that thing on the inside of you that's driving you to say, no, I don't want Jesus. It's the thing on the inside of you that's driving you to want crack. It's the thing on the inside of you that makes you want to run out and have sex with everybody. It's something on the inside of you. Amen. The Bible says the heart is desperately wicked, and who can know it? You don't know what you are capable of doing. You don't know what is in your heart, and you don't know what you're capable of doing. Listen to me, people of God. You might be the nicest person in the world. That's why when God saves you, he fills you with the Holy Ghost. The first thing he does is he gets in your heart because the heart is desperately wicked. In your heart is jealousy. In your heart is fornication. In your heart is lying. In your heart is hate. In your heart is unforgiveness. Some of your hearts are so black and evil. It's so dark, so black and evil. You don't know that what you're doing is hurting people more than helping people. So look, wait a minute here. In the 23rd Psalm, it says, it says Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. In other words, God ain't going to bless you in the corner. He's going to bless you in front of everybody that talked about you, everybody that lied on you. And God said he's going to bless the meek to inherit the land. So look what he said. God prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. And look what he said. Thou anointest my head with oil. Notice when the anointing comes, when the oil flows. Amen. I hope you enjoyed this Bible study today. I want to remind everybody, amen, uh, our television ministry, we need your support, amen. We've got to raise the 2500 for our television ministry, and for those who will sow $100 or more, we have this coat of armor to give to you. It's a collector's coin. One of our sisters found this, amen, and we thank God for Sister Shea for making this donation, and everyone that will sow $100 or more on Cash App tonight, we will send this out to you. Don't forget to leave us your address so we can get it out to you. And if you'll sow your seed of $25 or more, we want you to have this Bible chain to wear about your neck. Amen. And and we'll send it to you for a love gift of $25 or more. Amen. And it's got the scriptures on the inside. See, it opens up like this. And it's got... What did you say? This is the Lord's Father, Prayer? Yeah. The Lord's Prayer, all in these pages of this book that you can keep around your neck.
Amen. And we want you to have it. And it's right there. And uh, for love gift for $25 or more. Amen. We want you to have it. Amen. All right. Well, God bless you. And don't forget the anointed oil and the prayer cloth. That's absolutely free. Just ask our prayer counselors. Send it out to you. We even pay the postage. But if the Lord lays on your heart to help us with the postage, please help us with the postage. Amen. Well, God bless you. Don't forget to visit us Sunday morning at 11, I mean at 1.30 p.m. Right here at the Jesus is the Answer Apostolic Church at Agilon. 1544 East 123rd Street on Compton Avenue. Compton Avenue. Uh, Sunday at 11.30, I mean at 1.30 p.m. I also want to remind everybody that we are having a backpack giveaway on Saturday. Matter of fact, we're having a whole weekend. Uh, we have Bishop York J. Milton, his son Daniel, will be preaching a Friday night youth service. And then we Saturday, we'll be giving away the backpacks. Uh, Staples has already given us supplies, plenty of supplies to put into the backpacks. And it'll be for the kids, college students. you got to show that you're a student. And you'll get them absolutely free. Nice backpacks. Amen. And we'll be able to hand them off to you absolutely free. And then Sunday night, we'll be wrapping up the Youth Empowerment Conference with Bishop uh, York J. Milton at 1.30 on the 11th. Okay? So remember those things. Amen. If you send us your email, we'll send you the information. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok for more information about those days coming up. All right? Oh, yes. We will have a career day, and we're going to have some companies here that will be hiring on the spot, and they'll show you how to get hired. We're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're asking Metro to come. Uh, we're asking the, the longshoremen to come. We're asking the nurses to come. We, everybody's going to have their little spot set up. You can go, and they'll tell you how to get a career, even for bottom. We're going to tell you how to get a career. And they'll be right here to help get you in there so you can get a career to take care of you and your families and so you can pay your tithes to help the kingdom of God. All right? God bless you. We love you in Jesus' name. Don't forget, sow the best seeds you can, $25 for the, the Bible necklace and $100 for the Shield of Faith coin. Amen? It's a collector's item. Amen? You can keep it and uh, be blessed. All right, we love you. God bless you. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson. On behalf of all the saints, partners, and friends of this great ministry, we say to you, no matter what your problems are, Jesus, Jesus is, is the answer. answer. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.